Morning. Nanook and I are just heading out to uh, check a few beaver traps up the lake. I've been kind of scrambling to get my quota this year. Um, there's a certain amount of beaver I gotta catch every year uh, to keep my my trap line. It's kind of a legal requirement here um, for whatever reason. But uh, I use all the meat and and uh, the fur goes to good use. So, um, but yeah, I, I've got most of them now. My dad came up and gave me a hand. Uh, Kind of helping me along with the things that I couldn't do because of my my health, but uh, yeah, I've got a couple couple of houses still set right now. I need two more beaver uh, to meet my my requirement, and uh, I feel pretty pretty confident that I'll get one at this house and one at the other house I've got set. So I've got some weather coming in, and. Uh, it's about 8.30 in the morning right now, but it's just hovering, so I figure if I can get out here now, um, get it checked, I might be able to, to beat the rain, so that's what we're doing. Thought I'd bring you guys along. Good one. Yeah, that'll do. Sit him aside. Let's see what we got in the other one. We made up the quota right here. Doubtful, but we'll see. When I set these traps, there was still a lot of ice and snow. Like all of this was covered. But, oh boy. What do you know? Woo! I got it. Pressure's off. I'll try not to get a soaker here. Feels good. Let's get her. Take the 
the wire off, you calm down, Nanook. You'll beat me soon enough. Woo! That feels good. There we go. Another season in the books. Beauty. Calm down, Kevin. And I didn't even get a soaker. Hang these two up to dry. Let the fur dry out. I'll skin them tomorrow, but I've already got five beavers and a muskrat here. I gotta, I gotta skin. So we'll swap a couple out and get to work. It's coming down good. First big rain. I think it's done raining now, so figured I'd do a bit of skinning, start my start my skinning. It's always nice to work outside in the light rather than in the cabin. But uh, I'll start with just giving this guy a good brush. Just to get uh, any debris out of the fur so when I flush it I'm less likely to uh, put a hole in it. This guy's got a bit of dry blood because I, uh, I shot this one um, a couple days ago. I heard Nanook barking down in the bay and went down to see what was going on and he was way out in the middle swimming in circles this beaver was just teasing him, trying to draw him out, lure him out into the the deeper water. Um, a lot of people don't realize that the beaver uh, is a pretty tough animal, and um, what they'll do to dogs or wolves is get them out in the water, and they'll swim up underneath, and they'll just tear their bellies open, pull their entrails out, and kill him so uh, needless to say I was pretty anxious so I, uh, I hopped in the boat drove out there as fast as I could and dragged Nanook in and then I went back for my rifle and waited for him to pop his head up and got a good shot off so 
Yeah, so you start on the belly with these guys. They're kind of shaped like an oval when you're done, the, the actual pelt. Um, probably the most important thing is having sharp knives. This is just a, a hook knife for roofing. I used to open my animals up. Really useful and then uh, this is Old Faithful, little Opie Nell I've had for years. This thing is uh, skinned, I don't know, I can't even count, dozens and dozens and dozens, well over a hundred I would say, animals. Butchered a whole bear with this, two bears with this. Um, it's the knife I use for everything. Uh, spread a lot of peanut butter and jam too. So, yeah, just come up here between the teeth and you just make a nice straight line all the way down you got to be careful not to uh, cut too deep into the hide so you don't want to open up the uh, that gut cavity and you just got a mess right down to the vent Start again on this side, down to the tail. Then I take my other knife free that up, both sides. And there, that part's done. Next what I do is I take the feet, free up the tendons, give it a little pop, toss them to the dog. So you take all the feet off, the tail, That goes to the dog too, most of the time. Sometimes I eat the tails, but uh, not on this guy. That's going to him. The old Nanook. It's basically his beaver, so I wouldn't have got him if it wasn't for him. He kind of redeemed himself finding this beaver because the night before. He woke me up in the middle of the night and I thought he had to go uh, take a leak and uh, got him outside and there was a skunk <laughs> and uh, before I could stop him he was on it and the skunk bit his nose, he is bleeding everywhere. Uh, it was just a little bite but the, their noses bleed like crazy so there's just blood all over him, he's spitting and coughing blood and the thing so it bites him he lets go of it and then it turns around lifts its ass and sprays him right in the face so I've been dealing with uh, a horrible skunk odor here um, for well, almost three days now so but he redeemed himself so now uh, it's just a matter of getting the hide off I usually start up here on the head. Around the neck and stuff and the, get the, the bottom uh, lips off. You just pull and slice, pull and slice. It's pretty pretty simple. Oh, then I'll just evenly work my way down. You don't want to uh, 
um, skin yourself into a little pocket, that's how you make holes. See the entrance wound from the bullet. Using my little HMR. Worked perfect, went right in the brain. No exit, didn't damage the hide at all. I just have that little, little pinhole right there. So, pretty pleased with that. Scoop my way down to the nose. Yeah, those little uh, 17 HMRs are nasty little guns, and it's the it's the velocity, not the bullet size. Like you're shooting a bullet the size of a little pellet, little pellet gun. But uh, oftentimes on smaller animals, the just the velocity alone creates a, a sonic shock wave and just mangles stuff so I prefer the 22 for hunting for that reason but um, for these beavers that's uh, it's a nice flat shooting gun and it uh, did the job on this one perfectly so there we go here's the pelt so what I'll do later on is uh, flesh these on the beam and put them on the board, but uh, for now I just want to rough, uh, rough skin all these guys. I've got uh, yeah seven to do now in the next couple days, so I'm going to get the, these uh, five of them done, do the other two tomorrow, but there's one more thing to collect off of these guys other than the meat. And that's the caster gland. And these are what the beaver use in their scent marking for territorial reasons and for uh, for breeding. And what people use this for is um, different uh, women's perfumes, um, medicine uh, flavoring, candy flavoring. Like anytime you see, you've got like a vanilla. Um, flavor strawberry banana or whatever and it's not actually uh, bananas or strawberry um, like in different ice creams and stuff it'll just say natural flavoring well what you've got in there is beaver caster <laughs> that's what gives that um, imitation vanilla flavor used in a lot of things artificial vanilla that's this is what you're getting <laughs> Most people don't uh, realize that, but the the nicest women's perfumes all have uh, either beaver castor or um, muskrat oil glands. It's a really uh, just a beautiful smell. Um, the castor can be kind of strong. This is what they look like, uh, kind of comical. I think you'd uh, you'd agree. <laughs> <laughs> so what you do is you give them a twist and hang them up on a nail and let them dry and these go for about a hundred and hundred hundred and ten bucks a pound right now so worth more than the pelt uh, these days this one join his friends there we go so that's the uh my skinning process, um, <laughs> I don't know how many of you find that interesting, probably not too many people are going to be skinning beavers anytime soon, uh, uh, maybe metaphorically, but um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, the only thing left for me now is just to, uh, to butcher this, um, 
I'll probably show that in another video. I'm gonna cook some beaver tonight, so I'll show one of my uh, real simple recipes that I that I cook up. It is probably probably my favorite meat to eat of of any meat, uh, not just wild game. Um, yeah, it's it's just a really rich uh, red meat. The the fat on it on a beaver is un unbelievable. It's it's as every bit as good as uh, pork or beef fat. Um, yeah, it's I think it's it's the best meat. Um, some people uh, don't agree with that, <laughs> but uh, to me it is anyhow. This recipe is about as simple as it gets. It's not even uh, really a recipe. <laughs> so what I've got here is what I call a beaver roast. It's part of the vertebrae. Um, it starts, I cut it off above, uh, just above the hips and then where the tail starts down here. And there's just a lot of really nice meat and fat and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot for one person, not quite enough for two. So all I've got here, i got a cast iron pot with a little bit of water in it. And I'm just going to put the, the beaver in there. And I'm just going to add some salt. Quite a bit of salt. and then some pepper. And I'll just put this on the, the fire and let it simmer for a long time until the meat gets really tender. And at the very end, for the last little bit, we'll add the beans and uh, cook up a nice bannock with it. Go down and wash a little of this grime off. Oh, she's gonna be cold. By the time we get back, the, the food should be well underway. Oh. 
Oh yeah. Just about ready to start the bannock. Those frogs are sure going. Perfect. Finally. See how I did here. Hmm. Oh. oh man, you can't beat that. That's living. I think my next one, uh, I'm gonna gonna head out to one of my lakes on the other side of my line and do a little bit of fishing, camp out, maybe uh, scout, uh, scout some good, good spots to put up a, another cabin at some point. So, yeah. <laughs> 